Very little is left of the ancient North American monuments. More than 90% of the structures that were documented in the 19th century are now completely gone. And of the less than 10% that remain, the majority have been vandalized and destroyed. destroyed. Discovering the ancient Maya civilization has been like piecing together a giant, fascinating puzzle. Picture this. Back in the 16th century, Spanish explorers led by folks like Hernán Cortés stumbled upon the remnants of a once glorious civilization, with towering cities now reclaimed by the jungle. Ah, oh, the tragedy of the American, North American pyramids. There was once more than a million of them. Only a hundred thousand are left now. Sadly, their initial encounters weren't the most respectful. A lot of Maya history got lost or destroyed, thanks to biases and a general lack of understanding. The horrendous catastrophe of the Spanish conquest. The, the Spanish sent ahead of them terrible diseases like smallpox. Fast forward to the 19th century, and there's a renewed buzz about the Maya. This time, it's explorers and adventurers trekking through the jungles of Central America and the Yucatan Peninsula, hungry for knowledge about these ancient peoples. Two guys, John Lloyd Stevens and Frederick Catherwood, became the rock stars of Maya exploration. In the 1830s and 1840s, they journeyed to sites like Copan and Palenque, sketching and writing about their finds. Their work lit up the world's imagination with tales and visuals of the Maya's grand cities and sophisticated culture. By the 20th century, studying the Maya had become a serious scientific endeavor. Archaeologists got down and dirty in the ruins, conducting careful digs and uncovering secrets that the Maya left behind. Big projects at places like Copan and Chichen Itza peeled back layers of mystery revealing intricate details about how the Maya lived, worshipped, and governed themselves. If you have a relatively short time frame uh, to deal with, then searching for a lost civilization becomes much more complex and much more difficult. Discoveries at Tikal and Palenque gave us peeks into royal life, with their elaborate tombs and stunning artwork not to mention proof of the Maya's knack for architecture and stargazing. The lost city of El Mirador, hidden for centuries beneath the dense canopy of northern Guatemala's jungle, stands as a monumental witness to the ancient Maya civilization's grandeur and ingenuity. Rediscovered in the late 20th century, this city has profoundly reshaped our understanding of the Maya pushing back the timeline of their architectural and societal achievements to much earlier than previously recognized. Flourishing from the 6th century BCE, El Mirador was a preeminent city in the Maya world during the pre-classic period, centuries before the rise of the more commonly known classical Maya cities such as Tikal and Palenque. Its scale and complexity are astonishing, with sprawling urban centers, elaborate plazas, and sophisticated water management systems, including reservoirs and canals, that supported a densely populated area at its zenith. The centerpiece of El Mirador is the colossal Ladanta Pyramid. Towering above the forest, Ladanta is not just the largest pyramid in the Maya world, but also one of the most massive ancient structures in the world by volume. The pyramid's base covers an area larger than nine football fields, and it rises to a height of approximately 230 feet. Constructing Ladanta would have required moving millions of cubic meters of earth and stone. A staggering feat given the absence of metal tools, the wheel, or domesticated beasts of burden. This monumental effort underscores the advanced engineering skills and social organization of the Maya, capable of mobilizing and sustaining such a large workforce. El Mirador's discovery also brought to light an extensive network of raised causeways, known as Sakbiob, connecting it with other cities and settlements across the region. These causeways facilitated trade, movement, 
and possibly acted as political and ceremonial pathways, illustrating the city's importance as a regional hub. One of the most intriguing theories about El Mirador and the pre-classic Maya in general concerns the reasons for the city's decline and eventual abandonment around the end of the first millennium BCE. Researchers speculate that extensive deforestation and the demands of large-scale agriculture may have led to environmental degradation, reducing the city's ability to support its population. This theory suggests a cautionary tale about the sustainability of human-environment interactions, echoing modern concerns about environmental management and conservation. Comparatively, El Mirador and its monumental architecture can be paralleled with ancient Egypt's Old Kingdom, which was contemporaneously constructing its own colossal structures, including the pyramids of Giza. Both civilizations achieved remarkable architectural feats without the advantages of modern technology, relying instead on a profound understanding of engineering, astronomy, and mathematics. However, whereas Egypt's pyramids served primarily as tombs for pharaohs, Maya pyramids, like Ladanta, were multifunctional, serving as temples and possibly observatories reflecting the Maya's integrated approach to religion, governance, and science. The decipherment of the Maya script stands as one of the most enthralling detective stories in the history of archaeology and linguistics. For centuries, the intricate hieroglyphs carved into stone monuments, painted on pottery, and written in the few surviving bark paper books remained a locked treasure trove of the ancient Maya civilization's wisdom. The breakthrough in the 20th century, primarily attributed to the insights of Russian linguist Yuri Knorozov, transformed our understanding of the Maya, unveiling a civilization rich in history, culture, and scientific knowledge. The Maya script is a complex system of glyphs, which had stumped scholars for years. Early attempts at decipherment were hampered by the assumption that the script was purely ideographic representing ideas rather than sounds, much like the Egyptian hieroglyphs before their decipherment. This led to numerous speculative and often incorrect interpretations of Maya texts. The turning point came in the 1950s with Yuri Gnorozov. He proposed that the glyphs were not only logographic, but also phonetic, representing sounds. Gnorozov's insight was based on the use of the Landa alphabet, a set of glyphs recorded by Spanish Bishop Diego de Landa, which had been dismissed by many as inaccurate. Knorozov suggested that these glyphs could represent phonetic sounds as well as logographic symbols. This approach opened the door to reading the Maya script as a fully functional writing system that included phonetic elements. Knorozov's work sparked a new wave of interest and research leading to a collaborative international effort to crack the Maya code. Scholars such as David Kelly, Tatiana Proskuryakov, and later Linda Scheller and David Stewart, among others, made significant contributions. Proskuryakov, in particular, was instrumental in demonstrating that many inscriptions were historical records of Maya rulers and their deeds, rather than purely mythological texts as previously thought. This shifted the direction of Maya epigraphy towards historical reconstruction. One fascinating theory that has emerged from the study of Maya texts is the advanced nature of Maya astronomy and mathematics. The decipherment of the Dresden Codex, one of the surviving Maya books, revealed complex tables for predicting lunar and solar eclipses, the movements of the planet Venus, and the cycles of the Maya calendar. At the heart of their astronomical studies, was the observatory at Chichen Itza, known as the Caracol. This structure, with its distinctive round dome and strategically placed openings, served as a window to the heavens, allowing Maya astronomers to accurately track the movements of Venus, the Sun, and other significant celestial entities. The precise alignment of the Caracol's windows with these celestial bodies' appearances and disappearances throughout the year underscores the Maya's advanced architectural skills and their capacity to harmonize their construction efforts with their extensive knowledge of astronomy. This integration of astronomy into various aspects of Maya life highlights a civilization that valued the stars not merely as subjects of curiosity, but as essential guides for earthly endeavors. The Maya's legacy in astronomy 
evidenced by their codices, observatories and calendars, offers a glimpse into a society that found harmony in the cosmic order and sought to align its terrestrial activities with the celestial rhythm. It's a tale not too dissimilar to the story of the Rosetta Stone and the Egyptian hieroglyphs, but with a twist. You see, the Rosetta Stone was like getting the cheat codes to understand Egyptian hieroglyphs because it had translations right there. But with the Maya, there wasn't a neat bilingual text lying around. Instead, figuring out what those intricate carvings and paintings meant required a mix of smart guessing, deep cultural dives, and a bit of detective work in understanding the symbols, not just as pictures, but as a complex blend of sounds and meanings. Now imagine trying to understand a writing system that's not only about what things are, but also how they sound. And that's what the Maya script is all about. It's this incredible collection of over 800 different glyphs, making it one of the showiest, most elaborate scripts you could lay your eyes on. And the coolest part, we're still unlocking the secrets of this ancient script. The Maya script's ongoing decipherment is a reminder that history isn't just about looking back. It's a story that keeps evolving as we learn more.